I'm Dr. Maynard, um, bariatric surgeon at Sama Bariatrics in Atlanta, Georgia. Bringing you a video today uh, to talk about gallstones, gallbladder disease, and obesity. Gallstones are typically um, stones that form in the gallbladder, uh, and these stones can uh, create some problems for you, particular pain, and if they uh, get into the ductal system can create some blockages that um, cause pain and other symptoms. Your gallbladder in essence is a storage balloon. So you store the bile there and uh, at the bottom of this balloon, area called the sphincter of Odi, uh, is um, a door that keeps the bile from getting into the digestive system. When you eat particularly fatty foods, a signal comes to that area to open that door so to speak and another signal goes to the gallbladder to squeeze the gallbladder so you can push bile from the gallbladder into the system to help digest fats primarily. Um, when you have uh, gallstones, a stone can get stuck in the neck of the gallbladder which is think of it like the neck of a balloon. Now you may be squeezing in the balloon but you can't empty it because this stone is blocking the exit. Um, so that's one way of getting pain and symptoms from your gallbladder. The second one is a stone can get down into the system and then gets to that door that's closed and blocks that door from opening. And now you also get the same similar symptoms of pain and nausea. There are two basic types of gallstones. There's bile stones and cholesterol stones. Bile stones are easy to be seen on uh, ultrasound primarily. You can see them on a CAT scan. And there are a number of people who, probably about 50 million plus people who are walking around with gallstones in the United States today. Um, very few of them have symptoms. However, once you start having symptoms, you tend to continue having symptoms. Typical symptoms would be um, pain, usually after eating, especially fatty foods or spicy foods. Um, sometimes pain in the middle of the night, so you had dinner at 8 o'clock and at 2 o'clock in the morning you wake up with severe right upper quadrant pain. When you have this pain, it's typically that a stone, one of the stones have blocked the gallbladder and now you're trying to empty the gallbladder and can't empty so it causes you pain and nausea. If these stones get down into the common bile duct, they can block the outlet of the entire biliary tree and so everything backs up including into the liver. So you start having uh, stresses on your liver as well. And these stones can block the pancreatic duct which also causes you to get pancreatitis. So that's sort of the spectrum of gallbladder disease overall. So the question why do people as they lose weight um, get more gallstones? There are two theories. Essentially, think of gallstones um, a little bit of like having uh, sugar water that's boiling in a pot. And as the water evaporates, the stones crystallize and form at the bottom of the pot as the way sugar would. And so gallbladder disease is relatively similar to that in this sense. To move bile, it's hydrophobic, to move it through water to be able to excrete it, you have to surround it with bile salts. If you don't have enough of the bile salts, then the bile crystallizes out and forms stones. Uh, if you have too much bile, where you're making an abundance of bile with a normal set of bile salts, you then get crystallization as well. So that imbalance between how much bile and how much bile salts you have is what causes you to have gallstones. Secondarily, for patients, for instance, who are pregnant, they make a lot of red blood cells during pregnancy. Once the pregnancy is over, the body has to destroy these extra uh, red blood cells, increasing the amount of bile that is produced. Um, and as this bile is produced, you don't have enough salts to make it uh, so that it can get into the uh, system to be removed. You have bile stones that form. You can also have cholesterol stones that form as well, which creates some of the similar problems. So that's sort of what happens when you lose weight. As you lose the weight, now you have this extra blood that was hanging around in the extra fat, 
that's gone and as that gets destroyed over time you increase the amount of of bile that's made that's one theory but the other theory is there's a genetic predisposition to having uh, bile stones we find that patients who have uh, families who have gall bladder disease tend to have more gall stones than the average population either way losing weight is a precursor for uh, increased problems with your gallbladder and as you have more bile created more gallstones you tend to have more gallbladder disease needing to have surgery to remove um, your gallbladder how are gallstones di diagnosed primarily uh, initially it's your symptoms when your symptoms present what were you eating before then uh, are you having nausea are you having vomiting uh, is your pain in the right spot so what's the story that you bring as far as your pain symptoms go the second thing we do typically is to do an ultrasound of the gallbladder which tells us uh, whether you have gallstones in the gallbladder it tells us whether the wall is thick it can tell us if you have some dilation of that common duct that would let us know that something's blocked in the system the third thing we do is we get some blood work to see if you have elevation of certain enzymes we call them as a group the liver enzymes your bilirubin your AST ALT and alkaline phosphatase these tend to get elevated when the gallbladder is aggravated from either being blocked or being infected or generally having uh, some inflammatory process every now and then we'll have someone that has all the symptoms but they have no gallstones and in those patients we do something called a HIDA scan which tells about the functionality of the gallbladder so the HIDA scan essentially we give you some contrast in the veins it gets picked up into the liver and it gets increases in, in excreted into the biliary tree so the, we can track where that's going then typically we give you some medication that allows the gallbladder to squeeze and empty and this tells us if the gallbladder is functioning well um, and if it is uh, not emptying above about a 30% rate it tells us the gallbladder is not functioning well and probably needs to be removed so those are the ways we work up well gallbladder symptoms to figure out if it's gallstones or something we call bilirubin dyskinesia where the gallbladder wall is not functioning once we have those then the next step is to uh, assess the risk of having further problems and then to remove the gallbladder if we think that's going to be helpful in preventing further problems going forward if you like this video please give us a thumbs up uh, please subscribe to our channel and click on the link below if you want to make an appointment in our office so we can talk about this some more